Hello and welcome to the Film Pittsburgh Fall Festival and welcome to this very special conversation with some of the creators behind some of the films you just saw. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us. Let's start by just having everybody introduce themselves and the name of your film and what your role was in it. Deborah. Hi everyone, my name is Deborah Kahan Kolb. I'm the poet and the producer of the short film, Write Me. Pearl. I'm Pearl Gluck and I am the director of Write Me and I worked with Deborah on the film. Terrific. Hi, Erin. Hi, I'm Erin Brown Thomas and I directed and co-wrote Feeling Flush. Jeff. Hi, I'm Jeff Davis. Um, I'm the subject and I'm the writer, one of the co-writers um, of 50 Little Birds. Terrific. And Hannah. I'm Hannah Lindgren. I'm the producer, director, editor, and co-writer of 50 Little Birds. Terrific. Thank you all. I, um, since we ended with 50 Little Birds, I'm going to start with you guys. And my normal question to documentary filmmakers is, how did you find your subject? But your subject is right here with us. So I'm going to start with you, Jeff, and say, how did this all come about? Well, um, I've known Hannah for a long time and her and her mother, and Hannah's been involved with the art scene in my community. Um, we were members of, a, of, a, of a, the same art group at one time, and she approached me asking if I'd be interested in being the subject of a documentary about my artwork, and I thought that sounded interesting. I've worked with her um, on other small, small projects and thought it'd be really great to do something like that. And then that project got shelved for years um, while she went on and did some other things. And um, she came back to me and, and um, I was still willing and I'd, I'd retired, been teaching school, I'd been retired and now doing art full time. So it actually was a better time um, for us to do this. And I'm gonna let her pick that up because I think um, where the story goes from there is, is really interesting. So go ahead, Hannah. Hannah. Yeah, um, I had been wanting to make it for years. I'd been living in Alabama, so it made it a little difficult. Um, but when I came back, I got a job with a production studio um, that was interested in starting to create our own content. And it was honestly just the, the perfect time. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad we didn't try and make it before then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then they were on board to help create it. And therefore I had amazing cinematographers and an amazing crew yes. and it was just, just perfect. So. Yeah, the cinematography mm -hmm. is gorgeous in this. And really, I think your community, Jeff, and your location is almost like a character in the film. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that was intentional. Uh, his space, which he's in right now, was supposed to be a mm -hmm. character, um, as well as just sort of um, the world that, that he lives in, his mental world. Yeah, yeah, it was a really, uh, um, I think, really a helpful and lovely discussion about taking care of yourself and, and you know, self-care and your mental health. Jeff, talk, talk a little bit about your journey with that. Well, that, you know, we could fill volumes with that. We'd make a movie about that. <laughs> but um, what made the timing really good about Hannah coming back um, and making the movie when she did from my end of it was that I had really finally, since I left teaching, realized I, I had a really good chance to look back at my life. You know, you're, I'm in my late 50s. I'm recently retired. Sorry, I have a dog in my lap that's fussing, who's also a character in the movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I... I sought help. I, I was seeing a therapist. And so really doors were opening. Some things were happening with my mother, her dementia. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things were coming together in my life um, where I was able to move forward past a lot of a really tough life issues and, and yeah. tough for me. I mean, yeah. everybody has issues, right? Um, but it gave, I had the, finally had the words and the um, things. I had the words to say what I needed to say yeah. and what I wanted to say to other people about their own mental health challenges and journeys. Yeah, it really was very special that you were able to share all of that. Um, and Hannah, had you known that beforehand or did you approach this from an art perspective and sort of discovered that along the way? The creative process was actually really cool on this one. Um, I personally am a huge mental health advocate, um, but particularly in the last um, year and a half, I've really done a lot of work on it as well um, and worked on, on childhood trauma and similar things to Jeff. Um, so I think I always felt like a kindred spirit with Jeff, even if we couldn't name it um, or couldn't put the words on it. So I knew that I loved his art and I knew that I loved him as a person and that I related to him. Um, and honestly, a lot of the mental health stuff just came out in the process of doing the interviews and doing the writing. Um, and we kind of figured out what the story was as we went. And we actually did about three, four hours of interviews um, and then ended up having him answer a bunch of questions and write them. And that's where we came up with the script because we felt like that was 
a better way to get across clearly what his thoughts were on things. Um, and, and I basically then used his words to puzzle piece together the narrative. Yeah. Well, it was it was a beautiful writing job. I don't think people understand um, really writing a documentary. It seems like people you just follow a subject and then it all comes together and really don't know the, the full process. So it's great to hear you talk about the actual writing of it and how that came together. And it's such a beautiful little film. So thank you so much for sharing it with us. Jeff, do you have a bird with you that you can show us before um, we uh, log off? I do, and it's just a coincidentally, that I just cleaned my shop. And so these are, oh, wow. you know, with tin plate wings and beautiful. Yeah. This is the only thing within reach. Well, I'm glad you to try to grab 50 little birds and put them in the, the I don't think you fit them in the street. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. And another beautiful story is right in Deborah and Pearl. Can you start with the, the poem behind this film? Sure. Well, um, I wrote, uh, I wrote that poem. I've, I've written a lot of, um, uh, poems that relate to survival and uh, specifically the Holocaust because that's my family background mm -hmm. and um, very close to my heart. And I was in the middle of producing a big poetry event where we could showcase poetry of the Holocaust. And it occurred to me that um, we would reach more people and a different type of audience if we were able to take the poetry and make a film mm -hmm. out of it, help, help people, help audiences visualize um, the stories that are in the poetry. So I reached out to Pearl, who I admire so much as a director and who's done so much work with um, with this type of content about women, about survival. Mm -hmm. And um, and by that collaboration, you know, we were able to make this incredible film that brings brings not only the poetry of the Holocaust, um, you know, to light, but also is able to showcase, as Pearl will say, um, the stories of how women survive in other areas um, specific to bodies and branding. This poem um, is, is about how people survive the Holocaust, but also what happens after um, the, you know, years and years later, this, this was inspired by my uh, uncle who removed in the twilight of his life, removed the, the tattoo that he had gotten at Auschwitz. He removed it from his arm wow. and he had been living with it for 70 or 80 years. Mm -hmm. And then he decided at that point, um, I don't want the Nazis owning me anymore. I want to live my own life. And it was sort of a rebirth for him. And with that idea in mind of rebirth, um, you know, Pearl took it and, and, uh, and made right me. Well, that's, that's so interesting because of course the tattoos are something that every bit sort of a universal story of the Holocaust that we all recognize. But I personally have never thought about the removal of that and what, you know, the weight that that would carry. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, and that's exactly um, what was so powerful because um, Pearl and I both come from a similar background, um, Hasidic families, uh, grandparents who were in the camps. Mm -hmm. And we grew up with this idea that a brand um, is a story or um, a way to remember. And it's, it's almost a hashtag, as we say now, of never forget. We don't forget by, by wearing this on our arm as a, as a you know, historical moment. So when my, um, my uncle took it off, it was like a moment of regrouping. How do we look at this, um, not so much as a, a, a nation, you know, for the nation, for the Jewish nation, not so much as um, this person, this one man is not responsible to carry the weight, as you say, of yeah. all of um, you know, Jewish suffering on his arm. Yeah. He was entitled to own his own body and decide what to do with it. And that's yeah. the germ of that, um, you know, took it to the next level with Pearl, as she'll say now, with um, the stories of the young women who were trafficked. Yeah, a lot of women um, who have their bodies branded with tattoos in this film. Pearl, talk a little bit about that and, and working with them. Sure. Um, just to back up a little, I, I want to um, underline what Deborah was saying. Like, you know, we sat at so many kitchen tables with grandmas and grandpas, and mostly the women, actually. I think in our case, because we have Hungarian background, a lot of the men were kind of taken to labor camps, oh. and eventually to Auschwitz later on in the in the in the forties. Yeah. But generally, it was the women carrying these numbers um, for you know our Hungarian, I mean, relatively Hungarian background. So. Like Deborah said, this idea of removing the numbers. So when she got in touch with me, I was on a writer's retreat for a different film, but wow. you know, she sent me these poems and her poems are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we went through a number of different ones and we ended up picking um, 
the first poem was actually about a woman regaining her identity after a divorce. Okay. And so to be fair, that was already set as a tone. And yet she had wanted to look at this concept through the experience of her, of the cousin of, of the man who was trying to graft it and remove it. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was releasing a film called The Turnout, which was about survivors of trafficking at truck stops. And you know, as we all know as filmmakers, a lot ends up on the editing room floor that just was even part of the original reasons we made the movie and somehow yeah. we can't put it all in. And one of them was this idea of women regaining their identities and their bodies, even after they're free from being trafficked, they still have these brandings on their bodies and so there were these tattoo artists that were donating their time to cover it up and they can like pick a flower or something to cover a property of Salem or whatever. And this was started in Columbus, Ohio. Um, it's an organization called Survivors Inc. with a K. Um, and so I asked Deborah, are you open to what I can do with this? Because to me as a Holocaust survivor's grandchild who had spent four years doing research on survivors of trafficking, I keep finding similar motifs coming up specifically for women. And do you mind if I make the main character a woman? And Deborah was open to it. And so I was like, all right, if you're open to it, I'm gonna stop writing this other script and I'll send you something. And I was so inspired that it literally took two or three days, I think. Wow. Send her something, I know, which is really fast. Yeah. And so I sent her the script, she was open to it. Um, you know, I was also very moved by poetry in my younger years too. I had these notions that I could be a poet that was instantly quashed. But, <laughs> but I had a professor that gave me a book called Against Forgetting, which Carolyn Forche has um, anthologized. And it's a bunch of poems of survivors of so many different traumas. And of course it, oh my goodness. I live with yeah. these books on my table. I love oh, wow. them. Oh my God, that's Very the book. We should make a movie together. Um, so <laughs> anyway, and Miklos Radnoti, one of the Hungarian poets, um, his poetry is in it. So a lot, of, a lot of these elements came together. And so with Deborah's openness and my desire to do poetry through film, um, that's how the film came to be. And I just want to say that when the film first played um, at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, the Holocaust Museum in New York, we brought a survivor of trafficking and a survivor of the Holocaust together on the panel. Wow. And we both looked at each other and they each told the other, I never met a survivor from the Holocaust. And the one, you know, that's, that was Barbara, who's a survivor from Columbus, Ohio. And the, what was her name? As it's Early. So Shirley. Shirley. Yeah. Shirley was like 90 something years old, turned to Barb and she was like, I never met a survivor of trafficking. Wow. And they shared each other's tattoo, like they showed wow. each other stuff and they were speaking. And this is why, you know, we all people on this panel, you know, this is why we do the work we do is yeah. so that it pays forward and continues the conversation. Well, we're so grateful that you both do the work that you do because you made a beautiful, beautiful film. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. And Erin, your film is about women as well. Tell us a little bit about, about yours. Uh, so my film takes place entirely in a restroom, in a, in a apartment uh, bathroom. And it's called Feeling Flush. And it's about two women who are in a relationship, a new relationship, and they're determining whether it's OK to be in front of each other. Um, and that's what's going on on the surface. But on a deeper level, it's really a discussion of what intimacy is. Is intimacy sharing everything? Is it being in that place where you can be completely vulnerable with another person? Or is it uh, being in a place where you want to put your best foot forward for them and you want to, you know, preserve the mystery and, and et cetera. Um, and, you know, what is more ideal essentially and what's more important in a relationship. And I think, you know, hopefully by the end of the film, they're realizing that there has to be some sort of midway point on that. Um, but it's a, it's, it's fun because it, it gets it to be is. It's, it's a comedy. <laughs> funny. Yeah, I mean, you do, you sort of delve into this very, um, not serious, but, you know, important topic of intimacy and how people relate to one another and how you relate in a relationship. But you've got this funny little, you know, sort of kernel that, that gets it, that kicks it off. And that's a great way in. Yeah. Yeah, um, the whole thing started, so I have a writing partner who, her name's Kelly Vrooman, she's a comedian and she is the main star, like the first person that you see on screen okay. when she stars. And, you know, she, um, the man that she's now married to, when she was, um, when she, a little before they were married, they um, had, they basically had this sort of discussion okay. um, where, you know, he wanted to come into the bathroom to, to get something while she was going to the bathroom and she was like, no, <laughs> was like very confused and didn't understand. Uh, 
anyway, you know, they, they had almost like a fight. <laughs> she comes to me afterwards and she was like, oh my gosh, I have a story. We have to make a film. You have to write it. <laughs> yeah, and, and when she brought it to me, I said, you know, I think I think this is more interesting between two women. I think there are some yeah. other layers of things that we could get into with this. Um, and it's, it's interesting. Yeah. A, a, I also thought, you know, I had been wanting to do we, we do a lot of comedy, she and I, and we do a lot of comedy that's very laugh out loud and very um, joke heavy, but I had been wanting to do a comedy that was more nuanced and more just grounded in, you know, the pain of real life. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I realized that we could tell a really nuanced story at the same time, which is with say without saying, use, use subtext to help people understand that Two, these two people are at different levels of comfortability in their relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we had this backstory that one of them had been dating women for the longest time. And maybe this was the first or second, like it was new mm -hmm. to, um, to the character who was less comfortable. But again, none of that's explicitly stated. It's no. all, it's all the kind of thing that you might infer. And I was really interested in making a piece where you could infer things. So yeah. uh, when we, when I started pitching it back to her as this is two women, I was like, look, we can have like multiple stories going on here at the same time. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot to think about afterwards. And ultimately I feel really good about the way it turned out. Um, yeah, we're happy with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really, they developed, an entire relationship. You saw the evolution of their whole relationship in the bathroom in these few short minutes. So that was really an accomplishment. Thank you. That was the idea. And it was quite a small bathroom to do it. In. Well, I was going to ask that too. I mean, just logistically, I was very caught up in the story and enjoying it. But after it was over, I thought, did they shoot that all in a bathroom? How did how did you do yeah. that? Yeah, so I mean, if I had had more money, I probably would have built a bathroom set so that I could remove walls. But um, we had one of the other reasons we were really excited about this idea is, you know, Kelly and I always come up with these really big concepts. <laughs> and we kept telling ourselves, let's find something that's two people, one location, two people, like something we could shoot in one day that we could self finance that could just be, you know, another something else for us to sink our teeth into without having to go out and find a bunch of money. Um, so we found the story, we found it, we, we wrote it, yeah. but you have to find it before you write it in a way. Right, right. And then also <laughs> during and after. Uh, but when, um, yeah, you know, we didn't, we didn't really want to raise crazy money and create a set. So we had to go on the search for a bathroom that would work. Yeah. And we actually had somebody that has a really nice house offer us this gorgeous, huge bathroom that would have been very easy to shoot in. But ultimately we were like, oh, it's beautiful, but these people are not at that, that place in their life. And yeah. we had, because of needing an actual small bathroom for the story, we had to go on, we had to look at all kinds of bathrooms across the city <laughs> until we found one that had the layout that would actually allow us to shoot the way we wanted to. And wow. um, we found one that had the, the glass frosted door, which was so perfect because A, we could light through it for some yeah. angles and B, you know, uh, there's supposed to be anxiety about the person being right outside the door. And when you actually see a shadow going past, it's so much more uh, anxiety producing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we had to find one that we could like get the door off because we had to take the door off and on throughout the day. Yeah. When the door was on and you were in there and the equipment was set up, it was like, okay, no one can leave for the next hour. <laughs> and this is where the bathroom is. But you can't uh, use it. <laughs> yeah. And then the other complicated thing is that bathroom had a drip in it. Uh, so we had to like keep the water off in their house, but every once in a while there was a scene where they had to turn the water on. Yeah. The worker, it was, it was a day. <laughs> it sounds like it. Well, what you accomplished in such a short time, such a short, uh, a small amount of money and such a uh, tiny space is, is really lovely. And we're so glad that you gave, gave it to our audience and shared it with our audience. So thank you. Everyone, thank you so much for this conversation. It's been terrific to virtually meet all of you, and we appreciate you giving us a little more depth behind your, your beautiful stories. Thanks for sharing them with our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival.